And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Tuesday, May 9th, 2023. Markets uh, during Globex did not move up to a new additional high over what we saw yesterday in the session. So that high remains 13,368 right now. But the markets seem that they were not done pulling back. So starting here with the NASDAQ, everything on the little bit longer term charts remains the same. So we're still within what I'm counting as a minor fifth wave up. And that will then complete once we reach that pinnacle, that'll complete the intermediate C wave and in turn, the primary B wave. Now, the markets continue today to wait and trade in a very small range, back and forth and back and forth and, and not having really any direction other than a general slope lower. But when we started this morning in, in our US session, the market had already been marking itself down. And with the lack of any numbers, we basically stayed within a very tight range uh, for the entire session. Again, continuing to work ourselves a little bit lower. So I'm taking this as a couple of ways here in the NASDAQ. If I look at the S&P, the S&P more clearly did not create a new high over what we saw last week. So, and that would have been on Friday. So what I'm looking at here, I'm feeling that we could still have that A, B, and then a C wave for, again, an additional irregular. So it wasn't all that great of an irregular over fr a last Friday's high during our session, which was 13,358, 359. So we only got up to 68, which is about 10 bucks. So it's not totally a bigger uh, irregular B wave, but nonetheless, it still made a slight new high. So we're, we would label it as irregular. And then, so we get the A, the B, one, two, three, four, five, if we're done. And you can see just the trouble the market had as we move it into here and we're taking a look at this. It just was a lot of noise, so to speak, and a lot of not moving very far, very much. So if indeed this then is our completion point, then we can use the same levels that we had yesterday. So those same numbers on in terms of uh, comparing the minor fifth wave, the minor first fifth wave to the minor fifth uh, wave. And then those numbers are gonna remain the same. Where we might start to now pick up some differences is looking at the interior side of this. And we're looking at now this smaller minute wave one. And now we wanna compare that and put in some numbers for minute wave five. So those are the changes that I'm gonna be adding today. And basically we're just tracking movement now and still looking for that additional minute fifth wave up, which could be still substantial because don't forget that tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern, 8.30 AM Eastern, we will get the latest CPI data and consumer price index. And that will be a market mover. So again, we have the two sides, one looking for continued improvement in inflation via the consumer price index. And the other side would that if, if the Fed's going to continue to raise, if the Fed's going to stick to their plan, of basically uh, several additional interest rate hikes uh, until they can get control of inflation. Now, they continue to talk about, even though in those numbers, that they are seeing progress. A little bit of progress, a little bit of progress. So basically what the market will continue to try to hinge on is, is that a continuing trend right now? That inflation is slowly but surely beginning to come down. And it really depends on how you want to look at it, because there are many factors that kind of go into it. So, but in any case... We will, I will be looking at that number just to see what the market's reaction is going to be. And because they can react the way that they're going to react, whether I agree with it or not. So I would be anticipating 
that since they continue to feel that I think so much hinges because we're holding prices higher, there's so much hinges on what's going to keep this rally alive. They're not too interested in really beginning to knock down the markets. So not much that I can really say other than to continue to look for, because the Elliot's telling us, continue to look for uh, one more leg up to complete minor wave five. Now, ultimately, that remains the same in that here in the NASDAQ, and just a quick trip out to the four hour, we have wave C has already exceeded the high of wave A, intermediate wave A. And so that's been taken care of. What we need to do is get above 13,368, 370, which is where minor wave three topped out. So within this minor five, that's what we're looking for. So how are we going to get there? So if we're taking a look at, at the NASDAQ and we're taking a look at, let me go back down to the hourly chart. We're taking a look at minor wave five. Now, so the numbers that remain the same is that minor five equals minor one. So we have the equality at 13,383.75. Oh, we've not reached that yet. So that's going to be a level. So, and that is actually the most common in, in, in an Elliott wave relationship between first waves and fifth waves. Then we have the second, which would be that minor wave five is 1.618 times the distance of minor wave one. That one remains at 13,620. So the changes that I've made is that using here the minute wave one to minute wave five. So again, still sticking with the relationships of fifth waves to first waves. So if minute wave five is equal to minute wave one, that comes out at 13,382. So basically right that same area where minor wave five would equal minor wave one, same area. So now we get another level that's pointing us right to there. So we still may not see 13,400. This is just how it's lining up, but here's the other side. If minute wave five were to come in at 1.618 times the length of minute wave one, that level is 13,464. So there we have that 13,400 and then some. And not under, not knowing exactly where this is going to start from, is the market going to continue to move lower or is it going to rally a little bit as we move in, into Globex and the Asian markets open and then the European markets open? Are they going to start from a different level? So again, not knowing that level, I am basically was running them from uh, this low at 13,250 is the number I actually used. So giving the benefit of the doubt that the market will not really go below what we've already seen, which again is 13,250. And that's the number I used to get my minute five uh, levels. So again, where if minute five equals minute one, that's 13,382, that lines up perfectly with minor wave five equaling minor wave one. So the two equality levels pretty much match each other. So secondary, if, if minute wave five is 1.618 times the length of minute one, as 13,464. So uh, that's where I'm going to leave it right now. Again, tomorrow, we should get a little bit more information because the CPI number comes out. And then again, on Thursday, the PPI number comes out. And today, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, from my understanding, I'm not really 100% certain on the timing of this, we get all of the uh, both the Republican, the House, Speaker of the House, the minority leader of the House, and the minority leader of the Senate and the Senate leader are all meeting with President Biden 
and they're going to try to work out all of this deal. We'll see what happens. So the market as Globex begins in approximately an hour, so it will be an hour in or two hours in, if news comes out, we undoubtedly should get a reaction. And I'm sure that there will be a line, several lines, a crowd of reporters who are going to want to know some information of how this meeting went since so much is weighted on it. So we're going to be looking for additional information. We know we're going to get some from the CPI. Let's see what, if anything, comes out from this initial meeting or this beginning of negotiations um, between the House, the Senate, and the President. So moving average-wise, we did, you know, see the 50, as is all basis of the hour, the 50 to kind of turn and now is flat. The 20, the 4, the 8, all kind of following the market lower today. The 200s, the SMA continuing to point higher, the EMA already beginning to crest and go flat. Didn't take much. A solid day of basically a move moving lower, and we flatten our 50s and the 200. Over in the S&P, it is the same other than it's pretty clear here because we didn't break that high that we get an A, B, and then probably a C down to here and then a bounce back up. Again, this is kind of confusing, but an A, A, B, C, and then, you know, again, what it all is. I'm not sure, but I'm going to count it all as a part of the corrective phase in this small wave four. So still looking for minute wave five to begin. We did hone in and get closer to that 4128 level. And that was a, a number that should hold uh, where wave four would be equal to 38.2% of wave three. Very common, most common. And so I turned here as well to look at minute wave five in the S&P. So again, I would be looking at these levels. And this is, we take from that high, and we can see that the high is 4083.75. And we're going to then subtract that low which is 4067. So what we have is that minute wave one is 1675. That's its length. So let me just go over those again to make sure I've got them right. Nope, let me just try that again. 4097 minus 4265, 4062.25. It actually is 34. So it's 34.75. Now, what you would do, again, what do I want to use? This is this was the low from this morning, 41.31. And I'm going to leave there, but we know we got a little bit of room still that we can come down to 41.28. So 41.31. And I guess I go 41.31. Plus that 3475. <clears throat> Excuse me. Takes us up to 4165.75. So we get above this level. That's a good thing, but we're still pretty far from this level. And that's what we want to see. We want to see minor wave five take out the high of minor wave three. That pretty much is a given, but we still have that first number. Okay, so where do we want to wait? And now what do we want to do from there? Now we're going to go and we're going to use that 34.75 and we're going to times it plain 1.618. That equals 56 points. And now we're going to add that to 41.30. Now we're up to 41.86. So we can see that we're starting to run out of gas here. So we're going to look at what, what really could be the S&P began to tell us. So we know we have resistance at 4163 to 65, and then we have it at 4170 to 75. And then we have here 
at 4206. So those numbers kind of remain the same. And that would be minor five to minor wave one. And minor wave one was 232.75. That was the length of minor wave one. So if wave five equals one, that's 4295. That remains the same. How it's going to get there does now suggest that wave five is likely going to extend or may be the extended wave. As wave five, as wave three was pretty clean, it did extend. Wave five can extend as well. The rule is that out of waves one, three, and five, wave three was most often the longest and the strongest wave. But the rule is it cannot be the shortest wave out of waves one, three, and five. That would not be the case here because we already know that minute wave one is the shortest wave. So minute five can extend as way as did wave three. So the initial claim or, or the initial moves just don't don't pan out very well in terms of what this larger picture, larger by means of a degree, is really telling us where the market needs to go to complete minor five. So the internals don't necessarily match the internals of the larger degree. So we're going to stick with 4295. Wave five would be 0.618 of wave one at 4206. So that takes us to that first hurdle. And the other two numbers take us above that second hurdle, which is getting above the high of intermediate wave A. And that would then pretend to the intermediate C wave. So if we're looking at the intermediate C wave, we still have 4250 right there. It's called 4254, where wave C would be 0.618 times the length of wave A. Okay, perfect relationship, perfect relationship for C wave. And then we get up and we get above there. And that's what I'm looking for. And then finally, we still have an additional number where wave, minor wave five would be 1.1, 1.618 times the length of minor one at 44.39. And we're looking up here. All are realistic against the numbers that we're waiting on, against any type of a positive outcome to these discussions that we're having at the government level. And all of, everything else remains pretty much the same for us here in that the moving averages now again here in the nasdaq we got a jumbled mess let me just show you if we open this up we have a jumbled mess we got the 20 the 50 the fours the eight and the 200s all grouped together and we got nowhere and they need to break one way or the other to start to get this all straightened out so the s p is in a little bit of a bind right now let's see that if the news and what we're waiting for starts to clear up this picture. Again, I'm favoring the upside here. And if we start to break down, I'll figure it out. But it could turn into a very ugly mess. That's where I'm going to leave it right now. And our next update will be on Wednesday, May the 10th.